Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the world of Hyrule. Today, we get, uh, we rub some dirt onto the screen, and we play the GameCube's last major game, and the Wii's, well, I mean, I guess second, because Wii Sports counts more. So, like, we you bought, like, a 20, 20, uh, 32-ounce bag of, uh, bloomy dirt. <laughs> bloomy. Wow, it's dirt that glows, man. I can't yeah. believe, I can't believe they... Twilight Princess actually, in a nutshell. It's actually really worth a lot. Uh, yeah, to be fair, the GameCube <laughs> and Wii versions did not visually uh, look very nice on most modern screens, uh, because, well, the, the resolution combined with the art style, and I suppose some part of it might be down to the lighting engine that they used in the original, uh, looked a bit rough. Gonna, gotta, gotta say, it's, uh, it, 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 it's one of those games where the HD remaster was was a definite improvement. Oh yeah, so this is definite. This is that HD remaster. This is Twilight Princess HD for the Wii. The the, the there was there was a Wii U, huh? What? They made a Wii. <laughs> well, what now? <laughs> I love the intro to this game because it you know Ouch. it starts very similar to Ocarina oh, no. of Time. Probably gonna be like the the first out of many thousand times we say that throughout this commentary. You got the you got you got riding on horseback and then gotcha werewolf. Uh, you thought we were gonna be original? Yeah, no. Actually, yeah, Twilight it just, Princess. Like, like, <laughs> it's, it starts as an apology to Wind Waker and then it just like no 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 no, it's its own thing. Sort of. Sort of. Yeah, we're, we're, we're cashing in on the Stephanie Meyer fan base. Uh, Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, new new timeline, oh no. new link. So here we will have the adventures of S S Senpai. <laughs> <laughs> With oh, uh, with oh his trusty steed, Babaka. <laughs> You you did the wrong thing though. You have to name the you have to name opponent my ass for two very specific reasons. No. Uh, no. You've been working my ass too hard. <laughs> you got Ely's charm. Now you can call him my ass whenever you want. A horse named Donkey. I get it. I don't know why I was expecting a normal name, but I was, and I am not disappointed. You can, by the way, I'm a say. Yes. Also, hello. Yes, I'm also here. <laughs> just wait. Just wait. It gets it. <laughs> as, as you know in Brain Scratch, you have to name Link something stupid every time we play a Zelda game. <laughs> the best part, though, is, is that they don't use his name very often, so every time they do, you forget that it's different. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. It sneaks up on you. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> oh, this is going to be great. Aren't you a little I'm old to be calling me Senpai? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> in any case, <laughs> I was about to say, I, I, Link's Awakening was my first Zelda game, but Twilight Princess was my first 3D Zelda game. So the weird over-likeness to Ocarina of Time kind of flew over my head the first time I played it, and I sort of experienced it all in a fresh way. So for that reason, and that reason alone, Twilight Princess gets a major nostalgic pass with me. Uh, so if that makes sense. It, it's so something funny about me and my history specifically with this game. So if you're if you've been following Brain Scratch for a long time, you probably remember that uh, way back in the day, Baby Ted was not a fan of Zelda. As a matter of fact, because I was 16 and this was the internet, and you have to hyperbolize everything, I was like, "Oh, Zelda sucks, overrated, blah blah blah." I got over it, obviously. But uh, Twilight Princess, in particular, always really irritated me when I was little because Nintendo Power basically covered nothing but Twilight Princess for like two years and I just hated it just because of that because every time I got Nintendo Power I was like oh what are they gonna oh it's Twilight Princess again oh what Twilight Princess and then so but so funny enough I actually come to play it come the Wii U version and it's my favorite 3D Zelda game so funny well, how that I'm works I think, it, I, I think it's this Zelda that had the most delays Yes. yes, that, uh, you know, that it was, an, it was like a bit wild, like, I, I suppose, as well. There was, was like a massive originally. amount. There was a massive amount of cut content for this game. I don't even remember half of it. It's been a while since I looked it up, but uh, it was first unveiled at E3 2004. Uh -huh. That video is still online, <laughs> and it was, I believe, in interviews, Reggie said it was supposed to like come out later that year, uh -huh. 2005, <laughs> and then it got uh -huh. delayed. 
but say you sound times, like but... the most tortured out of all of us. I, yes, I just why don't you, why don't you tell that. us your experience? Like, with, yeah. your honestly, experience like with I remember when they made the announcement, I was so pumped for it. I, like I know my my story with this is basically anyone else's who was excited around that time, but I was so pumped for this game. I was so excited. I was like, oh my god, oh my god, it's Zelda, it's Zelda, it's Zelda, and then I was waiting for it so like so dedicatedly, and then delay. And then delay, and then delay. I think by the time I actually got the game, I was just really pissed at it already from the get-go. <laughs> you get were an go. old woman. <laughs> I, I was an old lady by the time I played this game. And, like, I, I was just real pissed from the get-go. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so, who here, when the game, like, and let's be honest, who here, when this game came out, was part of the Wind Waker sucks because it's cartoony crowd? Me. Me? Oh, okay. I definitely was. I, <laughs> I skipped over uh, Wind Waker completely, even though I did, I think, have access to a GameCube at the time, because I hadn't played o- Ocarina of Time yet, or, or Majora's Mask, and I was bitter about that. <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to have a chance to play those first. Obviously, I got over that by the time Twilight Princess happened. I'd like I... to clarify that I like Wind Waker now before Good. anyone starts like <laughs> before trashing the on me. Good on you. Yeah. yeah, now um, do not I slit my not... throat, please. I liked Wind Waker enough, but when I saw initially what this game was trying to do more with the combat and kind of a more detailed world in a sense, I was definitely looking forward to something a bit more depth-wise. Yeah. <laughs> than Wind Waker yeah. because Wind Waker is a lot of stop and go, not a lot going on around you at any given moment unless you're in a dungeon. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I get, I get that. you. Yeah, uh, well, even to the, even this game, to an extent, um, is a lot of the same uh, very basic lock-on three-dimensional combat that Ocarina of Time pioneered, and then the series sort of spun its wheels not particularly improving on for a couple generations. So, yeah, uh, with the rest of 3D adventure gaming getting a bit more complex and a lot of mechanical elements, I can see why some people got a bit fatigued with Zelda basically just being the basics for a while. Uh, I think that's a major reason why Breath of the Wild was so popular with people, because it had a lot more going on in other departments to make up for the fact that the combat is still pretty basic. <laughs> um, it's It definitely doesn't follow the same structure that the other 3D Zelda games do because uh, Ocar- like Majora's Mask is really the only one that deviates greatly from the structure of the other 3D Zelda games, but yeah. that's only if you're going for side quests and stuff. The main story is mostly, you know, area, town, dungeon, repeat until end. And uh, Skyward Sword, I haven't played that one myself. Um, but from what I can tell, the structure is the same. The controls are just different. Yeah, so. it's largely the same. Just like s- the puzzles are a little bit more, a little more movement based. The only difference that instead of new area, town, new town, new dungeon, it's same area, pointless gimmick, new dungeon. Same area, pointless gimmick, new dungeon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. T- uh, Skyward Sword is, is is awkwardly designed. It's not a bad game, exactly. Uh, but, you know... That's bloated. It, it, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a good way to put it. it, it uh, uh, Skyward Sword is all the problems Twilight Princess has magnified by 10. Yeah. So, so I I think Skyward Sword... No, not Skyward Sword. Well, I don't... Twilight Princess, I think... <laughs> sorry. It's going to be one of those commentaries. We're, 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 Ted, you meant... <laughs> we're just making up for abstaining from mentioning Sky, Skyward Sword for the past couple years. So, you know... Um, yeah. Well, by the way, welcome to the Twilight Princess conference. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talk about everything except Twilight. Except Princess. Twilight. Yay! Princess. You're getting you, you're you're catching on. Yeah. yeah. It's the intro to Twilight Princess. There is literally nothing to talk about in the intro to Twilight Princess. This is a great for I think it's like one of the longest intros yeah. in a three D uh, game. To be fair, though, uh, I I said this was my first three D Zelda game. I actually found this intro quite charming the first time I played through it. It's kind of like the Persona games, actually. There's a really long intro that can be interesting on your first time, but it's kind of an unholy slog on repeated playthroughs. Persona, Kingdom Hearts 2, basically. Because yeah. that, that's what I do with this game. What I did the first time I played it on Wii U, because I got the Wii U port, as soon as I got right in front of the... Uh, as soon as I entered the Forest Temple, 
save, exit out, copy save file to a different one. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's basically what people do with Baldur's Gate 2 as well. Just leave a save file at the end of the opening dungeon so you don't have to go through the whole thing again. So uh. one thing I do, I do, I would say I like this opening uh, this opening section, although I do acknowledge that I have a higher tolerance for so slower paced gaming than maybe some other. What I don't have a tolerance for are these goddamn goats. Jesus Christ, <laughs> get in the barn. Get in the barn. Please get in the I barn. No, I like these goats. I, I like the. I, I would like the goats. It's just that you know this kind of mini game where you have to herd animals in is not something new for me. You know, uh, Jack and Daxter did a similar kind of thing in one of its openings. I'm saying this right now. Biggest missed opportunity is this is how you should have taken care of Dark Beast Ganon. I know that's like <laughs> jumping way ahead. Whoa! But given that you fight. Beast Ganon, the bo the boss battles you're sort of hurting it into a shot. Uh, the, the the real problem with the goat herding. Ganon in. <laughs> the only yeah. this wouldn't be so bad if, if the goat wouldn't the horse, want to. If you weren't on the horse, it would be easier to steer the goats. Um, but you. But not only but that, the goats that will walk two feet in front of the door and then turn around and walk. Oh the other yeah, way. yeah, because their pathfinding yeah, utterly that. fails. I feel that. Also, like, whenever you try to get to a, a herd of, like, three goats, because you approach them too damn fast on the horse, they scatter instead of all going in the proper direction, unless you approach them really, really <laughs> slowly. You, you, you can get them to start moving in the right direction if you approach them really, really slowly, but that's a little hard to do on the horse. Okay, so the uh, meme tiers have been need to be shaken up here, because instead of press X to Jason, we need to have press A to whoop. Uh, become a thing. <laughs> Press A to woo! I don't know. <laughs> but he doesn't really make that noise, though. Yeah, he kind of just goes, rah! <laughs> he <doesn't>, yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it's a, be, a, be a very different link. It's like the hero of whoops. <laughs> it's kind of like Portal 2's Say Apple prompt, where you jump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow, well, I can't believe that you can't literally can't do anything by yourself, dude. All right. I, I don't think if you you even need to jump over the the fence. I think you can just leave and then he won't bother you. Yeah. You don't need to jump over to that fence. It's more of a tutorial to make sure you know how to do it. You need to jump over the other fence to get out. Because God forbid we open the fence, you know. <laughs> or just let you figure it out yourself because there's a fence right there. Why would it be there if you couldn't yes, jump you know, over it? Your girlfriend gets on your case for you know pushing your horse too hard, but everyone is making you jump fences here. <laughs> you don't have an option. <laughs> Honestly, it's not even the senpai that bothers me. Is it that it's lowercase? Like, why is it lowercase? <laughs> because <laughs> it needs to fit into the rest of a sentence. Because you know you don't want sentences. But you don't to... lowercase names, isn't senpai? Well, a title? Senpai's not a name. If if you if you capitalize the s, it'll read as s senpai instead of senpai. <laughs> s senpai. God forbid. Yeah, wait. It'll be wake up senpai as opposed to wake up senpai. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll actually have to verbalize the letter S, which is always awkward, you know? S Senpai. It's like an abbreviation. Like your pen name or something. S Senpai. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> Esquire. <laughs> Alright, so YouTubers, take this image of Link in the total blackness and chroma key, whatever the heck you want back there. Uh, I personally recommend putting the dancing... A uh, commercial from Japanese Link to the Past back there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so this, this whole area is... One thing that I do kind of like about this beginning section is in order to mask all the tutorials, they just ask Link to do the stuff for them as opposed to telling Link how to do it, so it implies... Except for sword fighting, in which case it tells you how to do it exactly. Well, no, it's that they're like, Link, Press show me how button. you do it! It's because you press B to slash, right? Or whatever. <laughs> that really doesn't help, that it's very... it's. Well, I there's just, a better there's a better way to design a tutorial so it doesn't feel super tutorial like. Even though it does make sense as a kid trying to explain. No, no, I, I more yeah. just mean in terms of character wise. It's clear that this link is not the the brain dead uh, <laughs> the brain dead monstrosity that some other Zelda games have because some of the other links are really stupid, <laughs> like, <laughs> like unbelievably so. If you think about the stuff that needs to be explained to them, so this one like has a working brain, which is a, yeah, a rarity for it, her <laughs> this. This is this is more like uh, the tutorial room in Final Fantasy VII, where it's written as the main character explaining all the tutorial stuff to other people. You know, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. It, it gives him the feeling that he knows what he's doing. 
What do you mean you're telling me this? The great person in the sky will know. 